Good evening and welcome to the March 17th regular board meeting. Uh, Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Coates? Here. Mrs. Horn? Here. Mr. Manley? Here. Ms. Mooring? Here. And Mrs. Piccolotonio? Here. Um, if you will all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Is there a motion to approve minutes from the February 8th special, special board meeting, the February 15th Finance and Facility Committee meeting, and the February 17th regular board meeting? Make a motion. Thanks, Mr. Manley. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. Um, any corrections to the minutes at all? Okay. Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Pickle Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mori? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. We are on the the um, fun part of the agenda and we are super excited to welcome back um, some students and performance to our board agenda tonight. So I am first going to call up uh, Mr. Kevin Dingle from the Gehenna Music Department, who will introduce students and staff that are here with us tonight. To the high school and I'm a proud Gehenna alumni. Um, and we wanted to first start off tonight by thanking the board uh, for its long-standing support of our district's K-12 music programs, um, which I'm a, program, uh, a product of and as well um, Mr. Miller. Gehanna is known throughout the region and state for its administrative and board support of the arts, and this body has a long history of creating an environment where our students and programs can flourish. So our, our students and families, thank you for that. Each March, for more than 30 years, the National Association for Music Education has been celebrating music in our schools month. And this evening, we wanted to share our appreciation to the board and Mr. Barrett uh, for adding this a, re a resolution to tonight's agenda that you'll be doing, I think, during the consent, consent agenda portion. Uh, this resolution honors our students' work both in and beyond the classroom. We asked three students uh, to give the board updates tonight. You'll hear from those in a moment. They are representative of each of the uh, instrumental and vocal music programs at the high school. And since there's a lot of exciting things going on right now, a good, a good opportunity to share those. Um, but before that, I did want to remind everyone of something very essential. Um, we are, again, a K-12 music department, and much of the reason that we have such strong middle and high school level performing arts programs are because of what goes on at the elementary school buildings um, and all of that all of those experiences that our elementary music colleagues get to provide to those students and then we are um, very lucky to then keep cultivating that um, and do really great things so uh, Paige Harding is here Rob Seabrack in the back um, are part of our, our team uh, for the high school and middle school so again we just wanted to again thank you and I'll pass it over to the students because that's more exciting than that <laughs> who's going first Larson okay. introduce yourselves before you speak I know I know who you are but could you introduce yourself too hi my name is Larson Becker um, I'm a senior at Gehanna, and I play cello in the chamber orchestra. Um, I went to High Point Elementary, where my music class was taught by Mr. Bahari, and I've been playing cello since sixth grade at Middle School East. Next year, I plan to attend the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. Um, personally, one of my favorite parts of being in an orchestra has been the summer camp for middle school orchestra members. I've participated either as a camper or as a counselor every year since it began in 2016. And this coming summer, I'm one of two head counselors who will be planning and running the camp. Uh, our high school orchestra has recently participated in an adjudicated event where we performed and received a rating and immediate feedback from experts, which was awesome. He practiced with songs with us, and it was really different and interesting. And it was cool to be directed by somebody other than Mr. Dangle. Um, 
good or bad. Um, currently, the Chamber Orchestra is preparing for a combined performance with the Gahanna Community Chorus. We have never performed alongside vocals before, and the rehearsals have been a fun challenge. Um, the concert is called Songs of Hope and Resilience, and there are two performances this coming Sunday afternoon at Peace Lutheran Church, and I'd like to invite everybody to attend. Um, music in our schools has always been an integral part of my education and school experience. It's important because I've always known that during the school day, I'll have time to be removed from the stress of writing and schoolwork um, just to make music with my classmates, and it's a good feeling, and I would like to thank you all for your continued support. Thank you, Larson. Hi, my name is Sophia Rivera, and I'm an 11th grader, and I sing in the a cappella choir. I attend Jefferson Elementary with Mrs. Twig and Middle School East with Mrs. Harding. Um, the choir program just finished our district choir contest with ones across the board and a superior, superior rating. And all choirs are currently working towards states. I'm really looking forward to learning our new song and wowing all the judges. Um, we'd like to invite you to our next performance on April 22nd and 23rd. Being in the choir program has been important to me because it's given me an outlet to do something I really enjoy and love to do and the ability to do it well. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thanks, Sophia. Hello, I'm Defang Dematabem. I'm a senior here at this high school, and I plan to major in chemical engineering when I go on into OSU. And I went to Jefferson Elementary, and that's where I first learned how to read music under the guidance of Mrs. Twig. And then I started playing the trombone in middle school South. And now I play the bass trombone in both jazz and the concert band here at the high school. The band program just finished with districts down in Worthington for OMEA, and it went really well with some of the best runs we've had of those pieces. And now with all the bands, freshmen, blue, and gold qualifying for states, we're currently working on those new pieces for the set event. And I'm just really excited about getting to dig through those new pieces and make new music and just exaggerate it, <laughs> yeah, basically. And if you would like to hear the final product, the date and location isn't determined yet, but it'll probably be around April 22nd to 23rd, so either a Friday or a Saturday. And both jazz bands will be also performing this Friday down in Ashland University, but that's nearly an hour and a half drive, which I don't think any of you are going to probably go. <laughs> but if you would like to hear the jazz bands, we'll also be performing here at the high school on March 22nd. It's a Tuesday, and it starts at 7 p.m. in the afternoon. And I just want to say the music program has played a much bigger role in my life than I ever thought it would. When I had decided to go into concert band in middle school, the back then I just wanted to have fun playing an instrument, and I expected nothing more of it. But along the way, I've gained experience with leadership positions, such as being a squad leader during marching band and serving in band council. And I've also gained lasting friendships that I never would have made without the band. Thank you for your continued support. We have a sax quartet called Task Force that is going to come up and play for you. Um, and we hope, uh, after a conversation with Mr. Barrett, that we can make this a bi-monthly thing and have, you have different groups come and perform for you. And to clarify Larson's comment, <laughs> um, the uh, chamber was uh, led by uh, Maestro Bill Boggs, who is the former Opera Columbus conductor and two-time Grammy uh, winner. Uh, who lives in, in Columbus and worked with that group. So I, too, was excited to <laughs> yes, work with, with, with them. Uh, task Force. Thank you. 
Thank you again so Thank much. Thank you guys so much. Mr. Sibriak and Realize. Mr. Dengel and, and students, thank you so much. Uh, we used to do this at our meetings all the time, and it gave us so much energy and, and so much joy. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to more of it. Thanks. Thanks so much. I just realized we didn't get the names of the students who performed. Okay. Uh, uh, just would you mind it? I don't know. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves quickly? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Dingle, I have to apologize. I didn't catch that your name was not spelled correctly on our agenda, but it will be spelled correctly in the minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, next, we have our Gahanna Lincoln Student Council President, Varun Muriala, and I I think I saw, okay. Oh, there you are, Vern. All right, uh, hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Varun Mariala. I'm a senior at Gahanna Lincoln High School as well as the student council president. And like usual, I'll just be providing a couple updates um, on student council. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with student council, most of our work in, sp in the springtime involves prom and uh, this year we're glad that prom is back to normal and um, because of a lot of different uh, complications and um, uh, with the date and the venue we had to push our prom date back to May 14th and this year will be held at the Valleydale Ballroom um, from 8 to 11 p.m. Um, also this year, uh, juniors and seniors are allowed to attend. Last year, because of COVID, it was restricted to only seniors. Um, and uh, students are also allowed to bring friends from other schools, uh, whether it's a date or just a friend. Um, and there are forms that students are required to fill out uh, beforehand just for safety reasons and um, just so everyone's accounted for. Uh, prom tickets are $45 and digital tickets will be available on locallevelevents.com. There will be a limited number of paper tickets that will be sold beginning May 9th in the uh, concession stands in the lobby. Um, so that's a pretty big uh, chunk of our time right now. And uh, also in the springtime, we focus on celebrating our teachers and staff with uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, in the past, we have been really supporting our teachers throughout the week, whether it's just small little prizes and gifts. Um, and we also have a teacher luncheon. Uh, last year, we had to transition that into a catering um, food option where teachers were just able to grab a box of food. But this year, we're trying to bring back the formal luncheon that we provided in the auditorium lobby. Uh, so right now, we're working on contacting local businesses to uh, give our teachers raffle prizes um, and also contacting businesses to provide our teachers a nice luncheon just to celebrate the enormous amount of work they put in day in and day out um, to help us grow as students and people. Um, likewise, on a more year-long term, our junior, uh, our wellness committee, uh, headed by Junior Blake Briel, is working on a mindful minute, which will be held on April 8th in the uh, uh, in the gym. Um, so this mindful minute is just really to help students distress uh, before AP tests and finals come out. So we've been collaborating collaborating with groups such as Hope Squad, Green Dot, Gehanna Minds Matter, and the counseling uh, team at our school to just provide students an ability to uh, understand the resources they have at Gehanna and just uh, open up opportunities for students to um, just distress before all of this finals, uh, all of the finals uh, come about. So we're also working on having a yoga station where students can uh, participate in some yoga activities and other small games just to provide them a nice way to end off the week and transition into finals. Um, also, because many of you may know that Gehanathon sadly had to be canceled this year, um, just with the many conflicts we faced having to postpone the date a couple times. So our junior, Jalen Jones, the head of the philanthropy uh, committee, and our entire student council are brainstorming new initiatives to make up for the revenue loss that we um, 
would usually be sending to Nationwide Children's Hospital and the uh, Ohio State um, group Buckeye Thon. Uh, we're also planning to transition some of these initiatives uh, into the beginning of next year and uh, expand our outreach, not just in the winter, but a year-long initiative. Um, and again, just finally, I want to thank you guys for your endless support of Student Council, and I'm open to any questions you have. Maroon, anyone have any questions? It's great about the uh, teacher appreciation luncheon and all the energy you put into that. Those are such great relationships. So thank you, and thank you for everything. I'm so sorry about the Gehanathon. Yeah. But it's exciting that you guys have Plan B. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Varun. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, we have from Gehanna Jefferson Education Foundation, uh, Sharon Tomko, and Trish Twig. Mm -hmm. Not the Mrs. Twig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the music, Mrs. Twig. <laughs> so thank you. It's so great to be here today after February. But uh, if I could have written a script on how I wanted the gala to go this year, I would have never imagined all of the wonderful things that happened. Um, just the community support, the business support, it was incredible. And we are so blessed to live in a community that is so generous and giving. Um, the response was incredible, and unfortunately, our treasurer is extremely, extremely conservative. And until every penny is reconciled and counted, we cannot give you a total, but we can positively, we got permission today to say that we raised over $160,000, which is, um, and 41,000 of that will go to Gear Gardens. And Trish and I have been doing this since it started. This was our 18th gala. And never in the history of galas before has the room been so quiet when the program started. And we started, well, I should say, Corinne started to talk about Gear Gardens. And I'd like to believe that's because it's such a special program. So special thanks to the Flaherty family for their $20,000 matching donation because we would have never reached that $41,000 mark if it wasn't for the Flaherty family. So, um, and then just a really quick brief update on Gear Gardens. Good news, we've been working with uh, the New Albany company about all of the deed restrictions that were on the property and once they heard about the project, they were like, we're all in. So that, our next step is we're doing a concept plan. Well, we're not doing it, <laughs> but a concept site plan is being drawn up, and the contract hopefully will get back to you all soon. Jefferson Township is working on revisions. So thank you, and Trisha is going to give you the rest of the update. So. Um, it was a wonderful night of fundraising, and then kind of shortly after that, 11 days after that, we started spending the funds. <laughs> Our grants committee met, um, and we had a lot of great ideas come from the teachers. The teachers do such a great job coming up with projects that are innovative and um, supportive of the students. We have our board meeting next week, Tuesday, so that's when we will be awarding all the grants and sending the letters out to um, all of the staff members that applied. Uh, one of the ones that we wanted to highlight that was really kind of fun is um, our Fab Lab teacher, Mr. Kunselman, wants to order kind of like a, all the materials to build a kayak, and so they're going to go through and build this kayak. They're gonna keep all the plans for future so that they can do it again. Um, They'll make sure that it is water worthy. <laughs> and then they'll um, actually be donating it to the gala as a donation for the auction. So it's kind of a fun, full circle, hands-on project for the students. And so we're looking forward to seeing that come to fruition. Um, and then I'm just gonna switch gears a little bit. So the other part of our job is community relations. And so from a workforce development standpoint, we had a couple job fairs planned for this spring. We had a summer job fair on Wednesday, and it was really awesome. We had, we had great participation from the students. They came in, they were prepared to talk to the employers. Um, we probably had over 20 businesses, is that right? Some of the students got hired right there on the spot. 
Uh, the employers were very excited to be there. Uh, they walked away with big long lists of names to people to call and follow up with. So we're looking forward to building on that in the future. Um, and we have another event coming up in April. It's called What's Next. Uh, for students who may not have a plan to go on to higher education right away, um, we're bringing in employers that are ready to hire students, um, bring them into the workforce, maybe let them have a chance to earn, and then when they try to figure out their path, you know, a lot of these employers will help pay for their higher education. So we're trying to present some of these different pathways for students that um, keep their minds open while they're still trying to figure out what the next step is for them. And that's it. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us? Or? have a question but yeah. um, I just want to say like the warmth and love that was in the gala, the gala room was just mm -hmm. amazing and yeah. to have a successful fundraiser you have to have dedicated people planning it and the two of you did such an amazing job mm -hmm. and your volunteers and so volunteers I can't thank amazing. you enough yeah. for doing that for our district so thank you thank you thank you it is definitely a huge team effort and we are so appreciative of everybody everybody helps out in some ways really so it's awesome thank you Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, next, we've got Joan Miller, who is here for Gehanna Jefferson Education Association. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Uh, GJA is excited. We're going to start sifting through scholarship applications that were due last Friday uh, to graduating seniors who are interested in becoming teachers. We offer three different scholarships with different criteria, um, but they all go to prospective educators. So we're also excited. Uh, yesterday, Jeff Wensing, who is the um, OEA vice president, visited Gehanna as part of his listening tour. All of the officers of OEA are visiting Ohio. Um, we went to Chapel Field Elementary. We came to Clark Hall. He had um, about a half a day. We had some lunch with Clark Hall teachers to just talk about teaching and learning in 2022. Um, and then finally, we are excited. We have four members who will be attending the NEA RA, which is our representative assembly. It's the largest democratic um, representative assembly in the country this July, which it's been moved from Texas to Chicago. So we have four members that will be going over the 4th of July. For the remainder of our report time, typically we have a building rep up here, but um, I asked actually with the building rep, we worked it out that I would come because I wanted to speak directly to the board as a GJA president um, about the ever present topic of teacher retention. When I took this job, I don't know that I fully appreciated the importance and the enormity of this role. It's a lot. I'm the spokesperson for a vast array of 574 members in a diverse number of jobs, settings, titles, etc. I help members navigate the contract, I answer questions, I listen as they struggle through tears, and there have been a lot this year. We talk about resignations and retirements and job postings and sick leave and maternity leave and so many other things. I'm not even sure that talking to past presidents would have prepared me for this job post-strike, post-pandemic, and in the hyper-polarized environment that is public ed. However, in the last month, the number of member interactions I have had that are focused on frustration, tears, and pleas for help is alarming, sorry. The number of staff who have reached out regarding the resignation process is equally alarming. I talk each month with Mr. Barrett and Mrs. Elliott on issues directly related to teacher stress and retention. These conversations are never about money. These conversations are always about kids because student learning con conditions are teacher working conditions. Some of our recent concern comes from the perception that the district is so focused on the necessary capital improvements and building projects that we've forgotten that beautiful buildings mean nothing if the people in those buildings, adults and children, are not safe, respected, and encouraged to be their best. This is readily apparent in any of the recent staffing decisions that have been made at many levels. We've noticed the new positions for additional curriculum and administrative positions, but there have been few, if any, new positions added to the single most influential job in each building, teachers. Last week it was announced that the majority of our elementary related arts staff would be traveling to two buildings next year to provide service. With our new super elementaries being created, there are obviously too many classrooms of students for a normal rotation of elementary specials. All year, the Related Arts Leadership Team worked on plans that asked for additional staff to provide their high quality opportunities that Mr. Dangle spoke about before to our growing population. They reviewed plans, they talked, they worked on a proposal that was best for kids. But let me be clear, this isn't about the teachers, 
this is about what's best for kids. However, they were told last week that none of that would be done. Instead, they would travel, and essentially the message was, don't worry about it, it'll all work out. Any concern that a specials teacher shared was dismissed or explained away or greeted with our ever popular, you got this, you can figure it out in this district. In conversation with related arts teachers just last night, these same concerns were shared last year when it was decided that the Goshen Lane specials teachers would travel. They were told concerns such as adequate supplies, extras, items, et cetera, would be taken care of. But as of yesterday, those things were not fixed from last year. We will lose quality arts educators because of this decision. Children will lose opportunities because of this decision. It is not sustainable, practical, or possible for teachers to do all that they are barely able to do now and then ask them to do more. Not when we are already working so hard to make up for the missed opportunities and learning for kids from the last two years. This past week, I noticed all the social media postings of the district, board members, parents, highlighting the achievements of children in the areas of arts and athletics. It's amazing to see what our kids can do. I even see later on this agenda, I had no idea that they were coming before, but that we're recognizing that March is Ohio Music Month. But this recent decision to not support the arts in a very real and tangible way has made it difficult for the related arts staff and our larger GJA membership to understand what that support really means. We were equally concerned when at least one middle school was told they would not be losing, they would be losing or at least not replacing positions for next year. We've been assured that those conversations are done, not done yet, but we are cautious to pin our hopes on claims that final decisions haven't been made. No matter what the decision, we still believe that more teachers are necessary to ensure equitable scheduling and equitable teaching loads at each middle school and high school. We are fully aware that federal money given to the district can and should be used to hire additional teaching staff to help children. We think it should be teachers. Each of these staffing decisions that I referenced is being made, in many GJA members' opinion, in isolation, in a conference room, in a building that does not see, hear, interact, or in our opinion, understand what children need. We've heard numerous times that our children need a sense of belonging in their classrooms, and we could not un agree more. But belonging in a building and belonging in a school community doesn't come from curriculum coordinators, assistant principals, or even certificated positions that don't directly interact with children on a daily basis for their academic and social emotional development. <laughs> Teachers do. These decisions are made without any understanding of the reality behind the choices. Taking a total number of students and dividing by another of sections completely ignores the complexity of scheduling with both special ed and advanced coursework. It ignores that only needing a certain number of teachers requires said teachers to teach multiple contents, or in the case of some middle and high school student, teachers, excuse me, caseloads of 150 students or more. No one can belong to a school community if they can't be seen and heard in classes of 30 or 32. It's nearly impossible in a meaningful way. Finally, we politely request that the board work to get answers from our administration about the lack of discipline and or consequences for students. We, more than any probably other profession beyond medical staff, understand the trauma and the issues caused by the pandemic. We were told repeatedly to have grace and compassion for students, and we did, and we continue to do so. However, more and more of our membership has begun to question, from pre-K all the way to high school, if we are making responsible choices for the development of children. Is it responsible to allow children to consistently break rules and there be no consequences? Is it responsible for a school community to not teach children that there are due dates and expectations that need to be followed? Is it responsible for us to just resign ourselves to students not following basic rules or expectations in Gehanna? We don't believe so. There's a difference between having empathy for children and apathy for expectations. I end this message with personal requests. First, when the Panorama survey is given again to teachers in April, release the results of the administrative and curricular questions to the entire staff. Each year, building share results from the students, but the full set of questions from staff about their perception of the safety and the climate of the building has not been shared in its entirety in all buildings. It should be. I hope that you also, as a board, get to review that data. Second, if you want to know how it's going with teachers, just ask. We currently have a board policy that prohibits a teacher from bringing issues or problems or talking directly to board members. 
We would like that board policy examined in the future. But in the meantime, GJEA members would love to speak with any and all of you. Reach out to me, give me a time, give me a place, and I guarantee we will get members there because we want what is best for kids. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Uh, next, we have a report out from Finance and Facility Committee from Mrs. Mooring. Yes, we had our Finance Facilities Committee meeting on Tuesday, March 15th. There were four items on the agenda. Uh, the first was an Economic Development 101 session um, by our um, Baker Tilly, who serves us uh, in Bond Council. Um, and I thought that was a, a good session. Hopefully everybody learned a little bit about CRAs and TIFs and, and uh, EZs. Um, and then secondly, we had a phase two construction update from Mark Ogden, who is the board's um, owner's rep. Uh, and uh, it was a very thorough um, and comprehensive um, update. And then third, um, Jill provided an ESSER update with regards to how our money is being spent, um, focused really on the financial side of it, um, and what, what can go where, and, and how does it have to stay in the district and that type of thing, or stay as a district expense, um, and those kind of issues. And then um, our new and welcome Scott Gooding as our treasurer. Um, gave his first um, February financial report to the district um, at that meeting. That's all. It's morning. Um, next we have uh, Policy and Governance Committee, Mr. Manley. Everybody, um, the Policy Committee is going to next meet. There's nothing to report today. Uh, we are gathering the next group of policies to be reviewed. And our next meeting is April 26th. And I just want to add, I think you're amazing, Joan. Thank you. Um, and then next we have an update from Student Learning and Achievement Committee from Ms. Scouts. Hi, so our next meeting is next week, Thursday, March 24th, and the agenda item is learning loss and assessment update. So I hope all of you can be there. I look forward to seeing you. Um, okay, we are on the public participation section of our agenda. If you were intending to speak during public participation and you did not fill out one of these pieces of paper, they are over on that little table over there. Judy's got them. Um, I would need to um, have one of these from you by the end of the public participation section if you intend to address the board tonight. Um, if you have not been here at a regular board meeting before, I'm gonna, going to just briefly explain the public participation bylaw um, so that you know what to expect and um, you are not surprised by anything. Um, so the public participation section of our regular board meetings is a period of time that we set aside at every regular board meeting and it is intended as your opportunity to address the board. Um, it is not a dialogue. It is not a period of time for you um, to expect answers to questions that you might have. It is your chance um, to make a statement. And that statement is to be directed not to the audience, not to the cameras, but you're directing your statement to the board. Um, you are welcome to speak about issues that are impacting our school district. However, um, you are not permitted to speak during public participation about personnel issues. So um, if you have personnel issues, questions, concerns, um, though there is a, an appropriate venue for those kinds of discussions, that is not at a board meeting. Um, we do our very best to protect um, matters that should be kept confidential as they relate to staff or students. Um, and if, if those are the type of issues that you have questions about, um, please feel free to reach out to central office 
and staff will help make sure that you um, are connected to the proper individuals. Um, also, public participation is um, you, so I, I, I see at least one slip where there are two names on the slip. Um, I don't know, so I actually, I need a separate slip from each individual who plans to speak, um, and we can get to that when I get to that slip. Um, but uh, when you go up to speak, um, you are speaking, it, it's your time to speak, so it's not a shared time for you to be speaking. Um, that uh, speaking time for each individual is limited to three minutes. Um, Mr. Gooding um, kindly has offered to be the timer tonight. You will hear a sound when you hit two minutes. Um, and then you'll have one additional minute and he'll let you know when your time is up. Um, if you still have additional things to say when you hit your three minutes, you are more than welcome to ask for an additional two minutes. Um, as long as you are not repeating yourself, I have never denied a request to extend time. Like I said, as long as you're not repeating, um, we've got a lot of things on the agenda, we have a lot of people here, and we are trying to be respectful of everyone's time, but also making sure that you have time to say um, the things that you need to say. So, all that being said, the first we'll do this first slip that I have two names on, and I don't know if you are both planning to speak. It, it's Deanna, uh, is it Tilla, Tillahoon? Am I pronouncing that correctly? And then e, um, Ariam, is it Knife? I'm sorry, Kimpe. Um, do you do you both want to speak? Oh, you want to go back and forth. Um, um, do I need to take a vote? I guess, I don't know. I need to look at our public participation policy. You think we're okay? Okay. Um, I will, I will, will since you've, you've already got prepared remarks that you um, are wanting to go back and forth on, um, looks like we're going to allow that flexibility. So if you both want to come up, you'll come up to this podium over here. The microphone is already on. There's nothing that you need to do except just remember when you're speaking, you're speaking to us. And will you mind pronouncing your names one more time? Because I probably, I don't think that I did pronounce yeah, them okay. correctly. Thank um, you. Dina Tillahun. Um I'm Aryam Kinfei. Um, okay. So in all honesty, history was not my best subject. It was hard to understand and remember all the dates and people without spending hours memorizing them and then forgetting them the day after the test. Mr. Browning has changed that for me and a bunch of other students by giving study guides, giving tips and tricks on how to, and to know who came from which time period and made learning a fun and, and un, understandable. Mr. Browning's class has Mr. Browning's class is always a class I come into with a smile on my face because I know I am not going to pass. I'm going to pass my next test, but also learn about my country and its past. The last time we saw Mr. Browning was about a week or so before our winter break. From then on, we would have a new substitute about every other day. During this time, we were learning nothing. We would still have lessons and writing assignments that were just meant to keep us busy and not necessarily learn from them. Now we have a more permanent substitute, Mrs. Edgar. Mrs. Edgar is such a sweetheart and is helping us learn as much as she can with the limited amount of information she's getting as she's not a permanent history teacher. Don't get me wrong, we love her, but it is just not the same. In a few months, us eighth graders will be entering high school and when that time comes, all the information we have already gone right now will go down the drain. None of us are exactly sure what happened or why it did happen, but what we do know is that we don't have our teacher. This, it's the school board's job to provide educational opportunities and provide the best educational ed education with possibly the best teachers they can find. The one thing we would truly that would truly give us the uh, best educational opportunity is to bring our teacher, Mr. Browning, back. There is currently a petition to bring him back that was created by one of our peers. It is almost at its goal, it's about 17 away. At this point, we are desperate to get our teacher back and would do practically anything to do so to finish our eighth grade year strong before we leave and depart to the wonders of high school. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any questions? Thank you so much. So, and we're not, you're welcome to sit down. I, just to clarify, we, um, I didn't say this part. There may be follow-up with you, um, but it won't be at the meeting tonight. So um, thank you for filling out the form and giving us your contact information. If there's um, follow-up, it will, it'll be after the meeting, separate from the meeting. Um, the next slip that I have is from, is it uh, Lamine Kamara? Did I? Is that right? Okay. All right. Um, hi, my name is Lamine Kamara, and I go to middle school south with Arya Mendina. Before the school year, I was horrible at speaking in front of people. But as we can all see, that's changed because of one man, our history teacher, Mr. Browning. I never thought I would be saying this in front of a group of people, but I genuinely miss him. Um, <laughs> not only did he teach us about the men and women of our past, but how to be the men and women of the future. Um, for some people, they saw him as a teacher, but to us, we saw him as a role model and a mentor. Um, the last time we saw him was a week before spinner break. It's been four months into, since then. I, from what we know, he was suspended of misconduct, but like multiple students were there at the scene, but we haven't had, mo we haven't had confirmation on anything, so it's not 100%. So I'm just going to caution you. I, I, that was fine. I just yeah. don't want you to... Um, I want to caution you to not, I, I don't think I heard you use any student or no, teacher's yeah. name. Okay, thanks. Um, we, now, we know you guys did not suspend him, but we also believe that you guys ha may have the power to bring him back. By definition, the job of the school board is to provide the best, edu to provide the best educational opportunities for the youth. And currently, the best education opportunity is to bring Mr. Browning back. No disrespect to our current teacher, Ms. Edgar, but we just aren't learning the same as when we were with Mr. Browning. Um, this not, won't only affect us now, but it will also affect us when we travel onto the high school because we wouldn't have learned the best we could without Mr. Browning. M my one voice might not be enough, but if you guys were to look at the petition, we have over 480 other signatures, including myself. Teachers are not allowed to teachers are not allowed to voice their opinions because they may also end up getting in trouble. If you've heard of the Lorax, the Lorax speaks for the trees, and currently we are the Lorax for our school, Mr. Browning, and everyone else. Um, we have started. Others, oh, oh, I can't say that. And that's all. Never mind. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I know it's kind of nerve-wracking to stand up there with everybody looking at you, but you guys are doing a, a very nice job. Um, the next slip that I have is from Kendall, is it Kripe? Good evening. My name is Kendall Kripe. I'm an eighth grade student at Gahan Middle School South. I'd like to thank the board members and superintendent for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. I want everyone to take a moment to think back to your favorite teacher was. What did you like about your favorite teacher? Why did you choose this teacher? Why do you still remember him or her after all these years? My favorite teacher makes learning fun. My favorite teacher has a sense of humor. My favorite teacher shows that he cares about his students. His lessons are both interesting facts and information. My favorite teacher helps me when I do not understand something. My favorite teacher is Mr. Browning. Without Mr. Browning as our teacher, learning has been affected in numerous ways. We have not been able to experience history class in the same fun, exciting way that Mr. Browning teaches the class. We have not been able to learn and master all the concepts and information that we should have up to this point. We miss his teaching style and all his funny stories. As board members and as the superintendent and as the superintendent, you have pledged to provide students again with the best education possible. In keeping with that pledge, providing us with highly qualified teachers is one of your responsibilities. Mr. Browning is a highly qualified teacher. Mr. Browning needs to be reinstated as our teacher so that we can finish the school year with positive learning experiences. Mr. Browning has not only impacted our lives in the classroom, but also supports students outside of the classroom. Mr. Browning is involved in many activities outside of 
out, outside of school that enhance students' learning. Mr. Browning is in charge of We the People, which many students were looking forward to experiencing. He also gives up his own time to help with school sports. Mr. Browning has a huge positive impact on our school. What I've expressed and shared with you today represents how many of my present classmates and how many students that went to Gannon Middle School South feel about Mr. Browning. Please bring our teacher back to us. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Um, the next slip that I have is from Terry Cohey. Well, I feel like a chump going after these kids. Um, I'm going to try to do this without crying. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that when I'm passionate, I can cry pretty easily. And when it comes to when it comes to my children, I really get emotional. So, guys, don't go tell Braden about this tomorrow. Um, I'm here to speak about Mike Browning. He is, he's one classy guy. I've spent the uh, last two weeks meeting with different administrators in regards to how we elevate the school district. Um, I've met with Jill, got Harris, um, Beryl, talked to Steve on the phone the other night. And um, there's one thing I think that goes without saying that I didn't say in all those meetings is, Pardon me, our teachers are pretty dang important. And um, Mike is one of those teachers. Uh, as they mentioned, there's a change.org going around that was started by the kids. And because the kids are, they're tired and they want some consistency. They've had a, frankly, a, um, a, um, I gotta do this in a clean language kind of way. Um, they have not had the best middle school experience with the pandemic. One of their favorite teachers has been taken away from them. And um, while we know we can't discuss that here, we should discuss Mike and who signed the petition. Who signed the petition were, t were parents, alumni, students, almost 500 of them. And that thing has barely even made it out of the gate yet. Some things about Mike and why people signed the petition was Mike is a coach. He does We the People. He garners the football table when you walk into the games at West. Um, he's been on committees. He has not only been an outstanding teacher, but he dedicates his life to the school district. And we're going to lose him. So, he is ingrained in not just the classroom, but the lives of thousands of kids that have gone through his classroom. We've got several of them here, several of them back there. He's raised four adult children and now has helped raise my kid, who has a, a learning disability, wouldn't be taking honors world history next year, whatever ninth grade social studies is, without Mr. Browning, but has spent four months without this dedicated teacher. He has been in the school district for over 30 years, as we all know. He and his wife are uh, part of the foundation of this district. He teaches the kids equally. Does it matter? what their socioeconomic background is, what their race is, what their religion is. Doesn't matter what their creed, nationalities. Oh, Mrs. Covey, I'm sorry. I, are we at three minutes now? I can extend two additional minutes as long as you're not repeating. I can give you about 45 more seconds. Okay. It doesn't matter with Mike. Mike cares about everyone. We know you can't be successful in this district unless you can figure that out. And being inclusive is part of being a great teacher here. He is, without a doubt, inclusive. Uh, 
Mike um, is valued, and I hope the board recognizes how much we value him. We do not want to lose him. That's it. Thank you. The next slip that I have is from Elizabeth Daniels. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Treasurer Gooding. Uh, tonight, I wanted to talk about some of our district scores. These scores are all found on Ohio Department of Education's website. Uh, quoting them, district and schools report information for the Ohio school report cards on specific marks of performance. So all of the information that I'm going to say tonight is compiled from district data sent to ODE. Uh, the first component that I want to discuss is improving that risk K through three readers. 85.3% of our third grade readers could not read at a fourth grade level and remained off track. Only 57.4 scored proficient on the ELA state test, which means they only had to answer 46% of the questions correctly. 100% of those students moved on to fourth grade in our district. Why are we passing kids when they're clearly behind? Just think about this for a second. If your student brings home a test or something with 46%, would you consider that proficient? Only 50.5% of fifth grade, fifth graders pass the state math, math test. In districts similar to J, GJPS, that score is 63.4%. Our math scores, have remained low, about the 50% range. Next, I want to mention prepared for success. How well are students prepared for future opportunities? There's been a significant jump in students taking the SAT over the past few years, which is great. Last year, 87.1% of eligible students took the SAT, and only 36.6% of those students met the minimum competency to get into a college rem remediation free which means they don't have to take extra classes to get out of college level. The percentage of students needing remediation has consistently stayed this quite big over the past few years. Did you know that for a college to count an AP course towards a gen ed class, your student typically needs to score a four or five on the exam? Only 31.4 of our students <laughs> scored a three or better. Why do we only provide services for roughly half of our gifted students in our district? Did you know that for grades 9 to 12, there are 13.2% of students identified as gifted in math, but only 3.3% of, of those students received gifted services? Can I have more time? Okay. <laughs> Gehanna truly has a lot to offer our students, especially once they get to the high school. But we must not lose sight of the basic foundations that shape the ability for our students to succeed. We need more emphasis on our math, science, ELA, reading, and catching up students from the pandemic. But the pandemic has, or while the pandemic has exacerbated issues, it cannot be used now as- Now we're at time. And yes, you may finish. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it cannot be used as an excuse because Gehanna has received an F for our achievement grade by ODE the two years prior to COVID. While I do not think that state testing holds all the keys, I do think it's a good indication in a, of weakness in a district, and these scores are very concerning. What I mentioned tonight is a small snapshot of the data out there, and I encourage all of you to go to ODE and thoroughly look at the report card. 
ask yourself, what can we do better to support our students? And piggybacking off of what Ms. Jones said, getting rid of teachers, losing teachers is not the answer. I have provided you all with the graphs of the scores I have mentioned and the performance level recommendation for the state testing. I am also here to help if you guys need help finding all of the information. I have a, um, like a spreadsheet of all of this compiled data I'm happy to share. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Mrs. Daniels. Um, the next slip that I have is from Lynn Fogel. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lynn Fogel, and I am a parent in the district. I have two daughters at the high school level. Um, one is a sophomore, and the other one is a super senior. Um, she did social graduation with the class of 21 and is, um, has deferred her diploma because she's part of the special education program and is participating in the transition class for another year. Um, because that older daughter uses a wheelchair to get around, um, I decided I wanted to address the board this evening and bring up the issue that um, we are embarking upon an amazing and wonderful building project for a new high school. And that project involves um, making a lot of changes to our stadium as well. Our football stadium is going to move um, to a slightly different location. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity to strongly encourage us all to take a look at wheelchair accessibility in the football stadium. Um, currently, there is accessible seating in the stadium. My daughter enjoys going to athletic events there. However, where the seating is located, um, the wheelchair spots are in the very first row of the bleachers with companion seats next to them. And when my daughter and I sit in those spots, we can't really see the game because all the people coming and going in and out of the bleachers are walking in front of us throughout pretty much the whole game. Um, and her sister plays in the marching band, and in order for her to be able to watch the band perform, I have to help her get out of her chair and step forward against the railing, and I have to block her against the railing so that she can see the band because halftime is when people are really, really coming and going to the refreshment stand and the restrooms and we wouldn't be able to see a single minute of the band performance from those seats. Um, the, um, students in wheelchairs, you know, there are not that many of them, but as we've been sitting there, I've also noticed family members of football players, grandparents, and community members who need that seating as well. And so I would encourage us to look at a different kind of option for the new stadium. And I apologize that I didn't make a copy of this picture for everyone. Um, I didn't want my printer to run out of ink. But, <laughs> um, but this picture um, is from Dublin Jerome High School Stadium. And I believe, like I put out on social media a call to all my friends who have children with special needs and said, what have you seen that is the best situation for this? And they responded to me and were, they were kind of like in agreement that Dublin Jerome was an example of the best way to do this. So I'll bring this picture over and you guys can pass it around. Essentially, you're at, um, I don't want to cut you, you're at time. Yeah. And, and you, if you want to ask me for two more minutes, as long uh, as you're not. That's fine. I won't need two more minutes. Uh, just, just essentially the way this looks is that um, the, the, wheelchair spaces and the companion seating is in front of the walkway where people go in and out of the stadium. So there's a, there's a fence, there's companion spaces and seating, and then there's a little um, railing behind them so that the crowd can't sort of bump up against them as they're going in and out. And then there's the walkway, and then there's the stadium seating. So um, it's, it's pretty common in new stadiums being built now, and I would just highly encourage us to look at this model for our new stadium. Thank you for bringing. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the picture. We'll make copies of it if we need to. Thank you. I can send it to everyone visually. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> um, the next slip that I have is from Angela Sullivan.
Hello. Um, I just wanted to say that the kids that came and spoke were amazing, and they were so well spoken for especially this is for Sullivan. eighth graders. I need you to yeah. Um, You're okay, addressing us. Yes, the kids were so well spoken, and um, I was just amazed that those are eighth graders, and I think that they really make a good case for their teacher, who I do not know, but I hope that the board is listening because this sounds like an amazing teacher. So. Um, uh, as far as my comments, um, I attended uh, Tuesday's finance com committee meeting, and I was glad to hear the status of many things going on in the district. Um, I do have a few concerns. Uh, my first concern was the new high school construction project. Um, there was an article that came out in the Columbus Dispatch. Um, I'm not sure if it was today, but I just saw it today, titled um, Gehanna Jefferson School's Soil Issue Leads to Phase Two Redistricting Delay and states that the elementary school projects are already $2 million over budget. Um, after looking at the schedule for the new high school, I noticed that construction is planned to begin before the construction documents and permits are completed. Um, I understand this may be somewhat of a new trend in building, um, but any minor change to the site or stadium um, could result in huge cost and time overruns. Um, the schedule that's being proposed is very tight, and um, judging by the problems already happening with the elementary schools, I think that being overly optimistic is um, maybe not the best approach. So, um, also a parent at the meeting asked about the parking situation um, during construction, and somebody replied that it'll be a mess, um, and there was kind of a round of laughter that went around the room, and, um, it wasn't really funny to me. I mean, uh, it's a serious issue with not having a parking lot during construction. Um, I'm also concerned with the spending of the nearly $15 million, okay, um, in ESSER funds being received by the district through the federal COVID relief packages. And it seemed like there was kind of a lighthearted mood about the spending of that money and the financial cliffs that could be created when new programs are started with that money or people are hired with that money, um, and then once those funds run out, what's gonna happen? Um, I think that's a very serious issue, um, and I, I would propose to offer the idea that maybe consider not even trying to spend all that money, or it, it's, a, it's something that you could do is not create all those programs and not create all the new jobs and um, feel like all that money has to be used. Um, just because of those financial cliff um, possibilities. Um, so I understand that we want meetings to be lighthearted and cheerful, but I hope that the board and, and the administration is taking these potential problems seriously. Um, Hi, Mrs. Sullivan. Okay, can but I have I, more time? Yes, Thank as you. long as you're not repeating, yep. Okay, um, and then I had one other comment about Black History Month. Um, for a district that's focused on equity and inclusion, I was actually surprised that the district did not honor the contributions and achievements um, that have been made by African Americans throughout history. Um, and I hope the district will be careful not to focus only on racism, systemic racism, the negative side of black American history, but to also celebrate the accomplishments and the good things and work on bringing us together creating a sense of belonging for all students as Americans and creating unity. Um, and that's all I have today. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Sullivan. The last slip that I have tonight is from Ian Phillips. Did I pronounce it? Oh, hi, Ian. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. First off, um, just, I'm not the best public speaker, so just bear with me here. I'm a sophomore at Gahanna Lincoln High School, and I went to Middle School South. I had Mr. Browning in eighth grade, and um, I've been going to Gahanna since kindergarten, and I can say that I've never had a teacher that has more of an impact on my life than Mr. Browning. Um, like, not even just history, like everything he taught me, how to take notes for every single class, he's had an impact on it. Um, I would never be as good of a student as I am today without him. And uh, I just wanted to give everyone a different perspective than all the students that have him now, because I did have him for almost a full year. We got cut short because of COVID, but um, he was a great guy. 
Um, I've gone through a lot of medical problems through my eighth grade year, and he's been there for me, and he was there to catch me up, you know. Like, in his free periods, I would come in, sit with, down with him, and he would catch me up on classes that weren't even, you know, history. So um, he was a great teacher, and he's an even better person. So I know this is a tough decision, so I just have trust in you guys that you'll make the one that helps the students the most. I do not have any additional slips for public participation, so we are going to move on to adoption of the agenda. Um, are there any additions, deletions, any changes at all to the agenda that are being recommended tonight? If not, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Thanks, Mrs. Mooring. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Coates. Um, any discussion? Okay, Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Mooring? Yes. Mrs. Piccolo Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, we are on to the superintendent's report. Mr. Barrett? Good evening. I want to uh, start out by uh, talking about. Um, some things that have happened that are that are really great in the last couple of weeks. Um, Columbus Convention Center, our DECA uh, program competed. We had over 20 students in the top 10. Sometimes students pair up and do presentations. Um, there's uh, presentations in 12 different areas. There's 15 of our students going to nationals. And um, they did research projects partnering with L Brands, Abercrombie and & Fitch, and other companies. Um, so very proud of those students, and they'll be going to nationals uh, in, in a month or so. Um, our Ed Rising program, which is part of Eastland Fairfield and Clark Hall, there was a competition on March 9th and 10th at Capital University, and 34 students from Eastland Fairfield in our program competed, and over 20 students um, um, uh, received prizes, winning awards at that conference. So we're very proud of that program, and it's a uh, it's a program our, our HR director, Shay Reed, has visited. Um, Jill Elliott has visited. I have visited. Um, it's great to have a teaching professions program here, and we hope those um, teachers go on to college, those young um, aspiring teachers go on to college and come back and, and um, interview here in Kahana. Um, I wanted to also talk about um, our band. We know that um, our band and choir programs all received um, – uh, superior ratings, and they'll be competing here in Gahanna um, at the high school and middle school West on April 22nd and 23rd, and those are always uh, great concerts to go to. Um, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Condor, a social studies teacher at the high school. She brought in a World War II veteran. His name is Mr. Deal. He was 90. He is 99 years old, and um, his wife was uh, one of the Rosie the Riveters, and. He spoke about his, um, so humbly, about his service to our country, how he was shot down and survived, crawled out of the fuselage of the plane, um, and um, made it back uh, to where other men were, and then was shipped to England, and then eventually went back to Normandy. And um, he has been uh, just um, going around the country speaking to different groups, and that was just such a moving experience. and. You know, the word that just stuck with me is humility. This man did so many amazing things, and he was so incredibly humble about it. And um, I want to give a plug for Mrs. Candor's class, World War II History. Every year, it's an elective class. We offer four or five sections of that class, and students take it not because um, they have to, not because they're, they need it for graduation. They take it because they want to. So that was a really good experience. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, winter athletics. Our swimming team um, had swimmers place at the at the state meet in in Canton. Our basketball teams both made it to regionals. Um, that was very exciting. We had wrestlers do very well. Our hockey team did very well, and also our bowling team. So winter sports are pretty much over, but we had a really successful s season. Um, I'd like to talk um, to turn it over to um, Mrs. Elliott to talk just a little bit about. 
our equity work and our DEI, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion work, and uh, user groups for um, the high school, um, the design of uh, the new Lincoln High School. Thank you. So we do have um, just a brief update about the equity team. We um, have had a couple equity team meetings over the last several weeks and continued working on ideas related to our five action team focus areas. Um, we're working on some things that we're really excited about that will um, incorporate ways to fully engage our school community and bring our parents and students in um, to make sure that their ideas are included as we continue to formulate um, that plan and then get ready to share it with the board and the rest of the community. So we'll be sharing about those opportunities um, very soon um, and so we're, we're excited about those plans. Related to the high school and middle school projects that we've been having user group meetings for, um, we have been busy over the last several weeks holding a variety of user group meetings. I'll talk first about the middle school projects. Um, we just about wrapped up those user group meetings um, and hosted those with teachers and department specialists across all three um, middle schools to discuss the interior of their spaces, which we mentioned we would be doing in design development. We have a few areas specifically at Middle School West that we're still continuing to have some dialogue about and get some feedback on, but we're very close to wrapping up that portion so that the architects um, can, can finalize um, some of the design development documents. In addition to those user group meetings, we also had um, three meetings, one for each middle school, where we were um, focusing on the phasing of the projects and how the existing spaces may be impacted during construction. Um, the building principals were instrumental in those conversations and, you know, we're still continuing to work on those plans, but they are um, well underway. At the high school, we recently hosted nearly 30 user group meetings and we've been, in, we've involved just over 50 staff members um, to give feedback re regarding the, the needs of their department and their content areas as well. Um, for these meetings, we had architects both in town and um, collaborating virtually. Um, and they were able to zoom in specifically to the desi designs of specific spaces um, to talk about things like furniture, although we haven't made specific decisions on furniture yet, where teachers need their teaching walls, where they need outlets and the type of technology they need, um, where sinks might be. So, so depending on the, the department and their needs, they were able to have, give really specific um, feedback there. We also talked about the teacher labs um, and accessibility in the building. So I'll let you know that we have been talking about the stadium. Um, and specifically the picture that you referenced are, are, have been part of our discussions in the direction we're heading. Um, like the middle schools, um, we still have a few areas to continue gathering feedback on. I did want to say in addition to those user group meetings, um, DLR created online surveys that then department chairs also connected with all of the teachers in the department so that they had the opportunity to provide feedback and voice as well into the needs. Um, so it's very exciting, lots going on, um, and we continue to move along in the process. All right, one more thing. Tomorrow we're hosting student user group meetings where we'll be meeting with um, high school students in the morning and then we'll be traveling to all three middle schools as well um, to be hearing from students in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade so that they can be providing some feedback about those spaces in, in addition to the teacher feedback. Thank you. I know the student user groups were something that we had asked about, so thank you for that update. And the last thing I'd like to talk about um, is personal. Um, after 34 years of uh, in education at different levels as a teacher, a principal, and a superintendent, I have chosen to retire in August of 22. So. Um, I just want to say, I'll say more toward the end of my time. Uh, we have a lot of work to do between now and then, but I just want to say that throughout my time in Kahana, um, I've admired and have been just so impressed by our community, our teachers, our administrators, our, our students, and our Board of Education. And uh, I am just so grateful um, for all that people have done to to um, care about our schools and even when we have deliberation like tonight, um, it gratifies me because this is what democracy is. What we saw tonight is what democracy is. Standing up and sharing your opinion, talking about it and deliberating. And I just want to say that I'm so proud of our Board of Education. I met with you, it was a different Board of Education in 2016. 
and we met at Heartland Bank, and we talked about our committee structure, and we talked about deliberation and listening to people. And so we set up a finance meeting, and it was, it was monthly. We set up a policy meeting, and people couldn't take it every month, so we went quarterly. And then we set up a student learning and achievement meeting. And you have worked just tirelessly to support the work of our school district. And that work in those committees wasn't just um, about work. It was also about communication. Those meetings were a vehicle for communication. So to all the students and, and, and parents and teachers that spoke tonight, I am energized by that, and I appreciate so much that people were respectful and clapped for one another and cared about one another, even if we don't agree. And that's what it's going to take, I think, to survive in the democracy we want to have. And so thanks. Um, I'll say much more in, in July, but uh, um, I uh, have had a wonderful time in Kahana, and I, I'm just continue to be impressed by our community. Thanks very much. Thank you, Steve. Um, I just I, I want to say something really brief. I too might have a lot more to say in August, um, but I just I uh, July, July. <laughs> Jill, you can't start crying. Um, I just, um, on behalf of the board, um, I want to thank you for your commitment and your dedication to this district over the past six years. Um, when we hired you, and you're right, it wasn't this board, um, but Daphne and I were here. Um, when we hired you, in my mind, um, the thing that we were most impressed by was your child-centered perspective. And, sorry, that perspective has helped all of us stay focused as, as we have navigated through lots of very important and difficult issues. The past two years in particular have been incredibly challenging for our entire community. Um, but we very much appreciate your steady leadership throughout a very difficult time. Um, and I guess the, the last thing that I just very briefly want to say to the community, because I am certain that it is going to be the next question that anybody has, um, the board will have a conversation um, very soon about what next steps will be. Um, and we will communicate that with with all of you um, as soon as we have that conversation. Um, I don't have any specifics right now, but we will communicate that with you as soon as, as um, we have that information to share. Is there any questions that anyone has or anything else before we move? Thank you, Steve. our new treasurer. <laughs> tell, tell, tell me about it. <laughs> Can I vote no against his retirement? No, we already. <laughs> um, I'm hoping I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm buying lunch, right? For just, to, just for anyone in our community has n who has not yet met um, our new treasurer, uh, this is Scott Gooding. Um, we welcome him to our district um, and to your first official regular board meeting here as our treasurer, um, and we're on the treasurer's report. Okay. Well, after that news, I'm going to actually keep the finance um, portion short because um, I was looking forward to many financial reports with Steve by my side working um, hand in hand on this, and I just, you know, I know I've only been here two weeks, but it's, it's, been, it's, it's been a whirlwind of two weeks. Um, but I, I, I really appreciate um, the, the care and the advice that you've given me as the new treasurer. So I, you know, yeah, I'm a little, I'm disappointed that he's leaving. Um, you know, he's a great guy. I um, didn't tell him before this meeting. 
so, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah, but I do wish you the best, best of luck. Um, so as, as Daphne mentioned with the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting, we did talk um, briefly about, about the financial report. We did get late into the evening. Um, I won't give you the same presentation I did then, but um, as we was reporting through things two weeks in, um, looking at revising our monthly cash flow projections and really diving in and getting deep into it, um, there's some, some tweaks that we're making. We're looking at some of the reports that are going to be different. We're looking at, you'll see, um, with the report that was presented Tuesday, there were um, links to what what was driving which reports in the, in the financial report from board policy. So we're going to those are things that are going to come up at the next policy meeting, maybe in in, uh, in April on the 26th when we look at those things to see if we want to make some changes, and that's okay. And if we don't, that's okay too. Um, out of the 89 page report, there's a lot of stuff there, but there's one page that that to me is is the key. It's it's that monthly variance report as we look at it. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time digging back into five years of historical data, trying to, to analyze that and looking at the trends and anomalies to, to use that with our five-year forecast to project where we're going to be. Um, very happy to say that we're, we're right on track. Um, there are some, some timing issues that are just things that happen from one month to the next because no two years are the same, especially these last two years. Um, we received tax settlements, property tax settlements in February. We're getting the... the the advances on those, we're, we're getting the, the final settlement um, this month, so you'll see that in, in the March report when it comes to you in, in April. And at that point, you'll hopefully we'll be able to move this from informational to actually the approval piece. So we're working on that, working with staff to get kind of the backlog of information that we've been working on, getting caught up on that. Um, you know, that's another piece I want to, you know, tip my hat to is the, the, the staff getting the district and the treasurer's office through the, the transition. It wasn't easy. Um, they did a lot of work and stepped up in a, a lot of hours, you know, before and at the end of the day to get those things caught up. So, um, you know, much appreciation to them for what they did. Um, and we're going to get through this and, and move forward, and it's going to be it's going to be great. Um, on the expense side, everything's looking great. You'll notice that the capital outlay was running a little bit low. The reason for that is we dug into that in some conversations. Uh, I think I was looking for Matt. As there, we had some budgeted dollars for capital outlay for for technology equipment. We were able to move those to our ESSER funds that, that are out there and utilize those, so then therefore we didn't need those in the general fund. So that explains what that variance was. So we can look into that work with our, our budget managers to figure out what those differences were and, and account for that. So everything's looking great. Um, that's, that's the financial report, and I can talk through the other items that's coming up just so that we know. Um, there, are, there are four items under uh, financial business, the, obviously the financial report for information. There are two appropriation increases, uh, one for public school support. These are um, for field trips and student awards at three of the middle schools. The other is a $1,292 grant that we received uh, for celebrating Ohio Book Awards and Authors Grant. There are five don donations listed. Um, the amounts and rates, there's a resolution from the county auditor's office now that we filed the tax budget that they will take that and the um, the levies that are on the books, and so we're certifying to them the amounts and rates that are levied from those. It's, it's an annual thing that we do. We'll file that with the county auditor in the morning. And the last item is an extension of the contract with uh, Grady Enterprises, who works with the district with the insurance, um, is the insurance broker, works with the insurance trust committee, and, and my understanding is, um, I think it was the day before I started, um, that the committee met. Um, they discussed this, and it was... Um, recommended to bring that forward to extend that contract. You'll you'll notice that the dates are there, so they were working without a contract, and we thought it was time to get that taken care of and addressed. So we have that on here for this evening for approval to ex to extend that for calendar year 2022. It's Mr. Gooding. Any questions? I just I just want to publicly echo your sentiments to the treasurer's office staff and and thank all of them um, for helping us get through the last couple months. Um, there are four items for action under financial business. If there is not an objection to taking those four items together, is there a motion to approve items number one through four under letter C? Thank you, Mrs. Mooring. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. Any discussion? Any additional discussion? Mr. Gooding? Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mori? Yes. 
Mrs. Pickle Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Motion carried. There are three items for action under letter D, educational people programs and services. If there is not an objection to taking those items together, is there a motion to approve items number one through three under letter D? I'll move. Thank you, Mrs. Coates. Is there a second? Thanks, Mrs. Mooring. Um, any discussion? Okay, Mr. Gooding? Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mooring? Yes. Mrs. Pickle Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Motion carried. There are 34 items for action under um, letter E, human resources. If there is not an objection to taking those 34 items together, is there a motion to approve items number 1 through 34 under letter E? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Is there a second? second. Thanks, Mrs. Coates. Um, any discussion? Yes, I, I would, um, on number 2, are those positions going to be ESSER related, the additional... Uh, effective one PTE secretary and then the ones for the next school year? Uh, <laughs> so the secretary increasing to full time is here at the Welcome Center. Oftentimes we bring in a, additional support to help at busy times of the year, so we're going to extend that um, particular contract to full time. The three FTE assistant principals um, are positions that we had conversations about related to the staffing study, and those will be supporting Blacklick and High Point as they have grown and continue to grow, and then part-time splitting Chapelfield and Jefferson, which balances out all of our elementary um, buildings to have assistant principal support. And then the math instructional coach is currently um, we have a part-time situation where part-time teaching, part-time coaching, and so to align with our um, English language art structure, extending that to be full-time coaching. Um, and then the speech pathologist um, supports with caseloads um, across the district. No, correct. So are we, are we, taking this math instructional coach because we're trying to match the language arts or is it needed? No, it's needed um, to provide additional support. Um, we have had several conversations related to our math performance and continuing to provide support and professional development and um, collaborative planning with our math teachers to support instruction for our students. Because, I mean, if it's, if it's a good math teacher, right, and now we're taking them out of a classroom, is that, is that a good use of a move? I guess is my question. I mean, certainly all of our teachers are, are good teachers, and our math coach specifically, um, coaches in this partic particular situation are fantastic math teachers for sure. Um, you know, their ability to coach full time and increases their ability to support more teachers, which then in turn, you know, supports more students. Um, certainly, you know, their, their direct instructional services will be missed, but, you know, we'll look to, to hire strong teachers as well. I just have a concern that we're, we have a, a teacher shortage, in essence, and we're moving teachers out of classrooms to do some of these functions, and so, I just, and, and looking at this in isolation is not the way to do it. I think, I think it would be very helpful to have a, a student learning and achievement meeting cover staffing and, and the supports and, and so we get a better idea. So just, um, I, don't, I don't think we had a chance to talk about this, Mrs. Mooring, but uh, I reached out actually to Mrs. Elliott, um, Mrs. Coates and I both reached out to Mrs. Elliott. Um, and it actually had the same conversation, not same, similar conversation about um, it would be great 
to um, have a, I know that we had some conversation when we did the staffing study, but it would be great um, soon to sit down with the board so that we have a, a big picture of um, where we're headed with regard to staffing recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I agree with you, Mrs. Mooring. And, and this position could be a current math teacher, but it also could be someone outside, right? The, the FTE on number two on page three. Correct. On page eight. Posted. It'll, it'll be posted, posted right? So it could. And then externally. It, it, there's a good chance it could be somebody internally, but it might be somebody from, from outside. So that hasn't, but that decision hasn't been made yet. Right. So um, just to round out that comment, um, I know we have a calendar for our Student Learning and Achievement Committee meetings, and I don't know that the request from me was that we have that conversation at a Student Learning and Achievement Committee meeting, but um, we can finish, I guess, <laughs> the thought that I started and the thought that you started, Mrs. Mooring, and figure out a time soon um, for the board to hear what those staffing plans are. Second question with regard to on um, page 12, the um, number 13, the a athletic academic intervention coordinators. So I'm, how do these hours get used? Um, and I noticed two teachers aren't teachers in our district. So I just, I, I want a better understanding of how that $29,300 is, is used. I would honestly have to get some more information about that. Can we take that off of our voting tonight? Which, yeah, which? Um, it's number 13, group 7, 8. Let me put my glasses on. 8. eight. Group 8. Um, so I think what we need is a motion to amend, um, right? So um, this is more, you want to make a motion to amend and remove from tonight's agenda under number 13, group 8. Is that right? I would like to make that motion. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. Um, Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll on the motion to amend? <laughs> Once you write all that down. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, you got it. Okay. Um, Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mooring? Yes. And Mrs. McElroy? Yes. Any additional discussion about any of these 34 items? I have one little um, comment. On item number 15, the employment of volunteer coaches, um, I want to just publicly acknowledge six people that are listed here that are going to be volunteer baseball, softball, and lacrosse coaches. And when I was a student, uh, playing softball, as I called it, baseball, was really the highlight of my life. I looked forward to that season every single year um, from third grade all the way up. And uh, that's the reason I went to college was I got an athletic scholarship, not in that sport. But uh, really, I would always assume that everyone's being paid. And for people to volunteer their time, I just um, am so appreciative as a parent and uh, proud of every one of these persons. So way to go, coaches. Mr. Manley. Any additional questions or discussion? about any of these 34 items. Okay, uh, Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mooring? Yes. Mrs. Pickle? Yes. The, the amended resolution carries. Thank you. 
Um, there are nine items for action under general business. Um, if there is not an objection to taking the nine items together, is there a motion to approve items number one through nine under letter F? So moved. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Mooring. You are too slow, Mrs. Coates. Do you want a second? <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Um, I am going to, if, if it's okay with everyone, I'd like to read the, re the text of the um, resolution under item number one, and then if we have any discussion or questions about any of the items after I read that resolution, um, we'll take the questions and comments then. So um, item number one under general business is a resolution um, to declare music in our schools month. Um, whereas for more than 30 years, March has been officially designated by the National Association for Music Education as Music in Our Schools Month, encouraging communities across the nation to focus on music education, and whereas music education is part of a well-rounded education for every student as outlined in the Every Student Succeeds Act, and whereas the purpose of this celebration is to raise awareness of the lasting positive impact of music education on the academic, personal, and professional growth of our students, and whereas music education shapes the way our students understand themselves and the world around them, allowing for a deep engagement with learning, and whereas Music in Our Schools Month reminds us that school is where all children should have access to music, and whereas music educators, students, and communities throughout Ohio demonstrate the importance of quality music education programs to the lives of young people, whereas the state of Ohio joins our music students, educators, and communities in celebrating the power of music, in edu of music education, now therefore be it resolved, the Gehanna Jefferson School District does hereby proclaim March as Music in Our Schools Month and encourages our citizens to celebrate and acknowledge every day, but especially in March, that music education is an essential part of every student's well-rounded education. Um, and I want to say thank you to Mr. Dingle, who is no longer here tonight. Oh, he is. Oh, I didn't see. Thank you, Mr. Dingle, for bringing the resolution um, to the board. We appreciate it. And thank you to you and Mr. Sibriak and um, Mrs. Harding, who left for tonight, but um, all of our music education teachers for doing what you do every day for students. It's important. Um, any, yes, go ahead. Yep, um, I just want to say thank you for a, an add to what Verl said, um, and thank you for what you're doing for our students. I have played a musical instrument since fourth grade. I was in the marching band. I was in the concert band in high school. I am still friends with my music teacher from fourth grade to this day. And music has been a big part of my college um, time. Uh, in my current career, I still use it. And so in many, many aspects. And so um, thank you for making a difference to our students um, and all of those students that um, we saw perform and who are part of our music program. Um, these are life skills that they will have forever. And um, I'm just so proud of Gahanna and the program we have. Any other comments or questions about um, this item or any of the other items under general business? Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Pickle Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mrs. Mori? Yes. And carried. Thanks, Mr. Gooding. Um, we are on board reports and discussions. Um, I don't have much of a legislative update tonight. Um, there's not a whole lot new beyond what we talked about last month. The only thing that I will note is that um, I have no idea whether or not we are still going to have a May primary. Um, last night was a um, another decision that the maps submitted by the redistricting commission are still unconstitutional. Um, so we in our community still don't know what our own state lines look, what our own 
um, House, Senate, or congressional lines look like, and um, I think the legislature is pretty busy with that right now. Um, anything from East Lynn Fairfield, Mr. Manley? Yes, um, just briefly, I uh, want to bring a report from Matt, uh, who reports, Matt Campbell, two items to report, uh, the board approved and negotiated contract with the teachers union that will be effect uh, for three years. And the second thing is that they received a presentation from the marketing and logistics satellite program at Groveport High. The students are getting ready for their DECA competition the first time in two years that they'll be competing in person and they're looking forward to that. So that's from Matt. I wanted to also just Again, uh, Superintendent Barrett mentioned the National Technical Honors Society. Um, the, the awards um, that we uh, had 25 new members inducted, so I wanna welcome all of them. And uh, 16 of them are from bioscience and six are from teaching professions um, and also a couple for architecture and uh, cybersecurity. Also want to say that the seven attributes of the Honor Society are skill, scholarship, honesty, responsibility, service, leadership, and citizenship. So very proud um, of our representation. And I uh, want to also commend Allison Slates, who was selected to be the next Vice President of Membership and Recruitment. So congratulations and thank you. And Amelia Alasis, uh, she's gonna serve as Vice President of Competition uh, Community Service. Um, Mary Kate Gebhardt is also being, uh, she's running right now as a candidate for a national officer position. So we'll look forward to hearing about that. And um, yeah, the Educators Rising is in all 50 states. Uh, for 45,000 uh, members nationally. So congratulations and everyone's name is listed on the table. And Lee, Thank you. Um, anything from Gehanna Parks and Rec? Uh, yeah. so, um, for Park, had his meeting for evaluation recently. Um, registration has opened for recreation programs in the city and the department, uh, the Re Parks and Rec Department, received a first place award in recreation programs and event category from the Ohio Parks and Recreation Annual Conference um, for uh, its Great Goblin Trail. Um, anything as our local government liaison, Mrs. Mooring? Um, how about anything additional from Gehanna Jefferson Education Foundation, Mrs. Coates? No, nothing more to add, but I have my first official board meeting with them Tuesday. I think that's the 22nd, so I'm excited. Great. Um, anything from Insurance Committee, Mrs. Horn? Like Scott mentioned, uh, we had our last meeting on the 28th, the day before he joined. So um, we did get an update, and we did vote to recommend to extend, which the contract with Grady, which we did uh, this evening, and our next meeting is going to be May 2nd at 4.30, but the the work to be done with Scott is um, how everything rolls into the five-year forecasts, so we'll have lots of discussions within the team on, on, on what's going to happen with all of that, and we look forward to that. Um, any additional items from board members? Okay, um, is there a motion to go into executive session pursuant to revised code 121.22 G1 for the purpose of discussing the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of an employer official or the investigation of charges or complaints against an employee official, licensee or student unless the employee official, licensee or student requests a public hearing? Thanks, Mrs. Horn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Coates. Um, any discussion? 
for any of you out there. Um, when we go into executive session, if you haven't been at a meeting before, um, the board will go into a separate room for executive session. Um, after executive session, we do have to come back in here um, and into public session again, but the only board action that we will be taking after executive session is to adjourn the meeting. So you are more than welcome to stay. I have no idea how long we will be in executive session, but there is no board action other than to adjourn the meeting. Um, Mr. Gooding, can you call the roll, please? That's the part I always forget. <laughs> Mrs. Mooring? Yes. Mrs. Pickle Antonio? Yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Horn? Yes. Mr. Manley? So it's 8.20. We'll take a brief recess um, for, I don't know, five minutes or so, and then we will head into executive Thank session. Thank you, everyone, for being here.